Hi everyone. How is your post-lockdown life treating you? Uh, not quite normal, but we're slowly getting there. Um, I, in fact, haven't had my hair cut yet, so that's going to happen tomorrow. I'm not even sure what I'm going to do to it. But anyway, what I've decided to do, as I did mention before, um, animal hair. And this is um, quite an interesting subject. There are lots of ways of doing these um, things, but I've decided a slightly different approach. I have roughly sketched a cat. Um, oops, I hope you can see that on a, um, a lovely lead crystal with a very weird shaped bottom. Um, actually, I think it's crystallite um, highball glass. So it is something that really anyone can use for cool drinks or whatever. So because most of these things end up in, in uh, my showroom for sale. So <laughs> Uh, I like to try and do something that, that is going to be saleable. And a cat is very popular. Uh, I'm allergic to them, but not, a, not to this one because it is just engraved. So I've done a basic shape of a cat and a um, different approach this time to my normal. Um, well, not my normal. There are so many different ways of, of doing these things. But what I'm going to show you is um, the, the approach of uh, a slightly intaglio one so in other words we're going slightly deeper this is very thick and um, so basically the, the, the different shapes of the creature uh, with different depths like the nose the head is going to be slightly deeper um, anything in the background like his back hip will be slightly shallower um, legs will be deeper because they're coming more forward and um, we sort of build it up like that. And then you end up with this cat shape with nothing in the middle, uh, you know, just depths um, and no details. And then what you could do is go into your cat again. And if you want to draw or trace or whatever the details onto that, then you do so with your pen um, onto the engraving and then start adding the smaller details, all the hairs, the eyes, uh, and all that sort of thing. And so you end up with, with a slightly more 3D look um, at the end of the day. Whereas up to now we've done uh, a lot of surface engraving, which is fine. And you know, you get all the details and, and if you are engraving to sell um, to your average person wanting a, a birthday gift for the next door neighbor or something, they don't want to have to spend a huge amount of money. And if you haven't spent many, many hours on it, um, and it still looks really lovely with the surface engraving, um, that is fine. You know, um, uh, intaglio engraving is is lovely. Uh, this is a very simple subject. It's, it's not what I would normally um, do as an art subject but it's, it's something where I'll show you the intaglio and also I'll be able to show you how to manipulate the, um, the hair effect and, and binding the colors of the hair as well, dark to light, light to dark, um, which I mentioned on, on the previous video, really important. Alrighty then, uh, let's get on with it, see what we can do. Okie dokie, we have got a white Arkansas in the drill and off we go. Just putting in the very basic shape of the cat. Okay, so now I have removed the white paper and you can see a very simple little outline um, in a sort of a faded white because it's the white Arkansas, it's not a, a brilliant white, but it's enough to see 
always remember with the light coming um, from the front of the glass um, it does help to show up the engraving um, especially when it's wet the white Arkansas is very dull but I don't want to have a deep sharp line as an outline um, because I may not want to be able to see parts of the outline in the end um, but basically with this sort of engraving I'm going as you can see relatively deep into the details uh, with this diamond uh, it's you can see by the amount of dust that's coming off which is of course quite wet because I'm using water so it's coming off as a, a bit of a slurry um, which also helps as you know um, breathing you don't want to breathe in the dust I haven't got my dust extractor on in this case but I've got a good mask on which you should always have and I'm going as I say relatively deep over areas that you'd expect to be coming forward a bit uh, so the brow and um, the sort of front of the face Now, as intaglio goes, there are slightly different ways um, of doing this. Now, this is not your traditional intaglio where you would, actually, I'm, I really must do that at some point, we'll do a simple version of it, where you engrave the entire um, area and then go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper as it comes more and more and more forward. What I've done in this technique, with this technique, I go deep um, in the area that is more forward, but I still leave an outline of um, the surface area of the glass, the, the upper surface. So um, it's a slightly different type of intaglio, but you're still allowing the you're still producing an effect with the light picking up the ridges an extra 3d effect by going slightly deeper the light will pick up those ridges and it will appear to be coming out meanwhile it's it's gone deeper in a lot of what we've done up until now has had elements of depth in it now um i'm using this diamond but i am about to go into a nice big fat one um, that is a really big diamond. It's not the right shape and you will see I changed that just now but I want to do um, just get going with this and, and really just build up um, a background uh, canvas. We are creating the canvas at this stage just um, blocking out a lot of the blank glass and uh, and coming more forward where necessary and I'm, I am taking quite a lot away from the chest there um, where ultimately there are sort of bunches of, of hair coming forward um, in the picture is quite a hairy cat and uh, all the way down to the bottom now as you can see I have just left that little gap I will be making the legs up oh, here we go. <laughs> I'll be making the legs deeper with this burr. This is a much better shape of burr. Turn the glass around um, to get a better angle and I am gouging relatively deeply into the legs because they are coming well forward and it's going to give the that illusion even though we are digging deeper into the glass. So having done that, I'm just filling in some of the outer areas a little bit lighter because they're further back in the background. And um, well, it's pretty obvious what I'm doing. Oh, now into the tail. The tail I'm treating like the legs. I'm starting off light where that joins the front leg and then going deeper as we go around the corner. It doesn't have to be that deep, but it's just an, a, a good effect. Because ultimately the tail is further back, but when it's on its own, it's all right to make it deep. 
but where it is meeting the foot there, it needs to appear to be behind it. So that little area at the bottom by the front paw needs to be shallow. You'll get the hang of it in, in eventually. Right, now I'm just going to hopefully show you. <laughs> <laughs> you can sort of see how the depth of the face is working. I need to bring the nose more forward, um, that actual little nose. I will eventually do that. Uh, again, this is a big cat by the looks of things. This is, I don't know, like a cougar or something like that. <laughs> it's not supposed to be. But it is, and uh, um, <laughs> if you keep watching to the very end of the very last uh, bit of recording, uh, you will see that I do some interesting things to this kitty's face. Right, White Arkansas, and just filling in, but where the middle eyeball is, the middle of the eyeball is, I'm going relatively deep, uh, making sure that I don't leave a lump in the middle. You go around the middle and make sure that the middle bit is also pressed in. A lot of people just go run and run and run in circles and then you notice that in actual fact the very middle of the eye where it should be the deepest has actually got a little lump in it because you haven't quite hit the middle bit. Um, that is quite a common mistake. So try and make sure that it is very marble like. Uh, when I say marble, I mean as in a playing marble, like a ball shape, um, and not a donut. We don't want donut eyes. Okay. Right. And yeah, this nose I will be making slightly deeper, I think. I might do that a little later. Now what am I doing? Just filling in the um, where the ridges are. Um, just giving them that half tone effect and blending down a little bit into its um, bottom jawline. The white Arkansas, while it is a half tone, it does cut fairly deeply into the glass. I wouldn't um, press hoot too hard for too long or run it too fast because it does get very hot. So just be gentle with this tool, keep picking it up um, and it doesn't need to run that fast to be honest. I very, very rarely run my drill at full speed. Um, this one's a 35,000. Uh, RPM, never, just about never go that fast. So here I'm just adding a little bit more um, width to its little rather large face. I have got, as I say, I have got a reference picture um, that I'm looking at. It would have been better to put it behind the glass and trace it, as I have shown you guys before. But I'm just trying to make it a little bit clearer, because it's not very clear when you've got a picture behind it, when you're trying to show a basic technique. So the drawing may end up a little bit funny, because I haven't traced it accurately. Um, but it, the main thing is to show you how I do these things you know, the actual engraving technique is what I'm trying to show you here. So I've got a very tiny burr um, and I think it's a rat's tail by the looks of things and I am um, following the white lines that are slightly underneath the eyes. There's a bit of black and then there is a white line. So I'm just copying that. Working dry, as you may notice. Again, um, I'm trying to show you guys as much as I can, and a lot of the time 
of the water and that prevents me from showing you properly. Perfectly all right to work dry, especially when the surface of the glass is already broken as it is. And um, this is quite nice uh, and soft. Um, this is a crystallite glass. It is a modern glass, uh, lead free crystal as they call it. So I'm just picking up some highlights. You can see the light shining down and and created creating some highlights on on the edges which shows a little bit of relief which is which is what we're aiming to do so you not only create the the relief and the shadows with um, what drills what burrs you use and and the shading itself but also the, your your depths are um, are helping with the 3d effect I've gone for a cup of tea by the looks of things. Right, no, I'm back and I have got a little brown rubber and I am running that around the, just underneath the eye uh, brow, if you like, and at the bottom, on the bottom line, we're talking about the black line that's un underneath the eyeball. Uh, it's important that you make that black. And then I'm just hitting the middle of it where the pupil will be. I'm trying to make sure I get these eyes right the first time this time. Well, the previous cat, I must have done it four times. <laughs> As I say, if you are actually tracing through the picture, it does make it easier. And if you are tracing through the pic to the picture, um, you know, if you've got the picture fixed behind the glass. Um, I, I really do prefer doing that, especially when you want uh, accurate features like on a cat. Then you can take it away because the rest of the body, that's, that's pretty easy. But the face, you know, the eyes, the position of everything is really important. Um, and I can already see w <laughs> what I've done wrong here, but um, I'm not going to tell you until later and uh, right there's my rather strange looking strange looking wild cat yeah as I say tracing it is if you have got the picture behind the glass still and you are tracing it if you wet it you will see it a little clearer um, although where you have got your um, polished out uh, printy as it were we call it a printy because it's it's that little round shape that you've made with the shiny eyeball and that does distort it when you're looking through and trying to trace for example um, what I'm doing now, I'm putting in the, the irises and it's it's a little bit distorted if you are trying to trace it through. So it is try it is best to try and copy. So if you look at the picture and just get the basic shape of what's going on. So I'm just in the middle of the eyeball, I am leaving that, that sort of um, elongated pupil as the background, so I'm going around that and leaving that as the polished glass so that it appears nice and black. Right, I've got my little, um, oh, I've got a stone. I've got a green stone in my uh, drill and I'm flattening, flattening the top of the uh, rat's tail um, where it is a bit worn out so I'm trying to, to get down to the fresh diamonds as we've done many times before. This little tool will work for a long long time because you just keep flattening the top. It'll get slightly wider but if you keep keep flattening it um, 
she just doesn't really get that much wider it's, it's so fine all the way down um, but you get to the fresh diamond and that means that you're able to make some nice sharp very very fine lines oh I've decided to hang five on that <laughs> I've gotten back to my rubber I'm flattening the top of the rubber um, can't remember why what am I gonna do ah, I think I'm gonna put some shading underneath the eyebrow I think I might be wrong you can see how I flattened the top of that let's have a look I'm just sharpening the darkness at the bottom Because when I've used the little white Arkansas, um, I've obviously come down a little bit over the edge, and so I want to make sure that's nice and sharp and nice and black there. And likewise, I'm putting some shading at the very top of the eyeballs um, because that's what it does. They've got they've got eyelids and eyelashes that are are shading slightly, so you don't want the the colour going all the way to the top. Now I've got my nice sharp diamond and I'm putting a tiny little outline um, on the bottom of the iris so that um, it's really, really it's standing out and it's looking at you. It's starting to look alive really. And in go <laughs> the dreaded highlights. Get them in the right place because you can end up with Clarence the cross-eyed lion like my last <laughs> I did have fun um, but usually if you are working from a photograph then you usually find the highlights that are in the eyes just as long as you put them in the same places you're okay there we are this kitty uh, this rather large fearsome kitty is just looking at me now thinking what are you going to do next I've got my uh, soft grey rubber any rubber will do and um, I'm just throwing in some uh, half tone really uh, not even half tone gentle shading because again we are still just creating a background canvas for all that we're going to be doing. Lots of hair, lots of um, color in this particular, or well, variety of, of shading in this cat. And I've, I've done that deliberately because I'm wanting to show you how to blend the dark to the light, the light to the dark when it comes to hair. So you can't really, at the moment, see the legs, but as I say, the ones in the front are, are deep. And there's an interesting effect. The top of these legs are dark. The bottom of the legs are slightly lighter. And I am um, going to be showing you the difference between the dark and the light there as well. Uh, when we do the hair later on. But at the moment, just the general background shading. This is definitely a Leslie Pike cat. This is not a cat of this earth, I don't think. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Mm. 
looking and thinking, obviously. Got the little white Arkansas in the drill again. And I'm just going to add that shape, the little white, not white, what am I talking about? The lighter area shape to the nose. End of part one and the part two will be following very shortly.